Okay, so last uh, week we had a webinar on uh, importance of connecting leads in surge protection devices. Like how we had discussed last time, <laughs> the, uh, even a small increase in uh, length of a connecting wire for SPDs can result in huge increase in uh, voltage protection level of the SPD. That means even uh, for up to one meter cable, there was a voltage drop of around one kV per meter <clears throat> for cable length of one meter. So this week we are going to discuss about uh, the importance of backup fuse in an SPD and selection of SPDs. Like what are the parameters we have to uh, take care? What are the parameters we have to think while selecting an SPD? So again, we have multiple parameters. So we'll be covering uh, one important parameter like impulse current in this webinar. Remaining we are going to cover in our upcoming webinar. So <clears throat> we are going to start now. So these are the various uh, international standards for surge protection devices. That is IEC 61643 part 11 2011 uh, for uh, test methods in LV power. Again, the same we had discussed last time also. So we are going to skip it and uh, come right to the point. Now, we have to discuss about the connections of SPD. So basically, there are two types of SPD connections. Connection 2 and connection 1, uh, we have given the name. In first type of connections, you can see <clears throat> all three lines R, Y, B uh, neutral is directly connected to earth and there is a fuse in between all three lines and SPD. See, this, this type of connections is called uh, 4 plus 0 connections because you can see all four uh, connections are directly connected to earth. In second uh, type of connection that is in connection type 2, all three lines are first connected to neutral. And from that neutral, there's a connection from neutral to P. So this type of connection is called three plus one connection. Three numbers of connection from line to neutral and one number of connection from neutral to P. Again, I'll repeat the same. There are two types of connections, connection type one and connection type two. A connection type one, all three lines and neutral is simultaneously connected to P. Whereas in a connection type two, all three lines are first connected to neutral and then neutral is connected through SPD4 uh, to P. So <clears throat> here are some points uh, regarding connection of SPD. Uh, point number one, connection between live conductors and P, that is a common mode protection which is shown in connection type 1. Uh, second is connection between live conductors, uh, that is differential mode protection that is shown in connection type 2. Protection between line conductors and PE is compulsory, whether you are achieving it directly by connecting to the line uh, PE conductor or through neutral. <clears throat> protection between line conductors and neutral is recommended to ensure equipment protection. To protect our equipment, we have to uh, protect line, uh, connect line conductors and neutral. Protect, uh, protection between line conductors is optional. That is, if you want to connect an SPD in between uh, two lines, you can do that, but that is optional. That is not a mandatory requirement. Some equipment may require both uh, common mode protection for impulse withstand and differential mode protection for impulse immunity to ensure overall protection against transient voltage due to switching or from atmospheric origin. Uh, <clears throat> example, class one equipment or class two equipment with uh, FE connection. This we are going to discuss further. So here you can see these two type of connections. In first of, uh, case, that is connection type 1, 4 plus 0 connection, you can see that voltage protection level of the system, the complete system will be equal to voltage protection level of the each SPD. Whereas in case of CT2, that is connection type 2, 3 plus 1 connection, the effective voltage protection level will be the sum of voltage drop across SPD 1, 2 or 3 plus uh, the voltage drop across SPD4. Now, again, we have to understand here as we discussed in the last webinar, actual voltage protection level, that effective voltage protection level will be equal to UP1 plus UP2 plus voltage drop across the connecting wires. This we have to understand. This uh, we discussed in detail in last webinar. <clears throat> now, where the protection between line conductors and PE is provided by a series connection of SPD, that is in CT2, uh, in uh, CT2, uh, <coughs> protection modes, example, single mode SPD line to neutral plus neutral to earth, according to CT2, this series connection shall fulfill the above voltage uh, protection level requirement. 
that is the required voltage production level at the connection point that is uh, the imp impulse withstand capacity of the equipment we have to see what is the impulse withstand capacity of the equipment and accordingly we have to select the voltage production level which will be sum of up1 plus up2 uh, plus the voltage drop across the connecting wires so this we have to ensure especially in type of uh, in ct2 uh, type of connections 3 plus 1 type of connections we have to ensure that now uh, a manufacturer should mention a combined voltage production level in their data sheet but if the manufacturer has not mentioned that in the data sheet it should be calculated by the addition of voltage production levels given for the individual spds uh, mode of protection which are connected in series so <clears throat> generally all the manufacturer should mention uh, the combined voltage production level but in case they have not mentioned this we can calculate it by uh, adding uh, voltage drop across spd 1 2 or 3 plus voltage drop across SPD4 uh, along with the voltage drop across the connecting wires. It is recommended that the voltage protection level provided by SPD does not exceed 80% of the required rated impulse voltage for the equipment. That means uh, whatever the impulse uh, withstand voltage of the equipment is, let's say it is 2.5 kV, the voltage protection level of the effective voltage protection level of the SPD shall not increase 80% of that value that means 2 kV okay uh, that is called the safety margin we have to keep some margin this safety margin is not necessary where one of the following uh, following cases applies where the equipment is directly connected to the SPD terminals because that is going to reduce the wire length by a huge uh, margin and hence a voltage drop across the wire length will be very less where a protection scheme according to V type or bus bar mounting is applied uh, this we had discussed in the last webinar also. Uh, <coughs> there are uh, bus bar mounted SPDs are available in the market. Once you connect, uh, use bus bar mounted uh, SPDs, the wire length will be very less. And due to this lesser wire length, lesser connecting lead lengths, voltage drop across it will be very less and you will get a very higher, uh, very lower voltage protection level. An optimum uh, protection can be achieved using bus bar mounting SPDs. Uh, where the voltage drop across the overcurrent protection in the SPD branch circuit is already taken into around, uh, account. This we will discuss in the further slides also. We have to ensure that while calculating the voltage protection level, voltage drop across the OCPDs, the backup protection has to be calculated <coughs> and has to be considered as well. Uh, where the protection according to over voltage category 2 is provided, but the over voltage category 3 or 4 equipment is in, uh, installed at this location. That means there are multiple uh, over voltage categories 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, over voltage 2 category says that equipment uh, impulse withstand should be 2.5 kV. So we have chosen the protection ac according to over voltage category 2. But the equipment which is going to be connected at that place is uh, comes under over voltage category 3 or 4. There this particular margin can be ignored. Now, this is how a normal SPD is uh, connected. Uh, let's say A is a line uh, line conductor or live conductor. So there will be a wire length A uh, and then there will be an OCPD over current protection device. Then again the, from that OCPD to SPD there will be a wire of length B and from SPD to work there will be a wire of length C. So the total uh, connective wire length will be A plus B plus C. So we have to calculate the voltage drop across uh, all these th uh, small parts of wire A, B, C. <clears throat> then again, uh, SPDs and backup fuse. Uh, this is one of the most, uh, I mean, I am sure a lot of people have a lot of questions about this backup protection. Why do we need backup protection and what backup protection we are going to uh, select? How fuse rating are going to se be selected? So this we are going to discuss in this webinar. Uh, first is, again, SPDs are the most sensitive devices in the electrical circuit. Because uh, they have a response time in nanosecond, they are the fastest device in electrical circuit. And the uh, SPDs are connected between line to neutral or line to P uh, that we had discussed in the earlier slide, whether it is a 3 plus 1 connection or a 4 plus 0 connections. Uh, SPDs offer a very low impedance during the transient voltage. Uh, almost they create a short circuit. Uh, this we discussed in the last webinar also. Once there is a uh, <coughs> over voltage across SPD terminals, they create almost a virtual short circuit and by uh, offering a very low impedance and that is how they create EQ potential. Now, MUV based SPDs will create a short circuit during TOV. Uh, let's say uh, a normal SPD will have a maximum continuous operating withstand capability of let's say 300 volt. 
And then there was a temporary over voltage due to some reason, let's say a neutral cut or something. SPD was experiencing 440 volt, a temporary over voltage condition. During that time, if that particular voltage condition is prolonged for a longer time, SPD can fail. While failing, it can create a short circuit. Secondly, in case of spark gate based SPDs, uh, the short circuit can be created due to follow current, which again can result in fire. Now, how do we protect our system from this kind of uh, problems? <clears throat> so every SPD after a certain time uh, will come to end of its life. While coming uh, to end of its life, there are two possibilities. SPD may fail in open circuit mode or SPD may fail in short circuit mode. If it fails in open mm -hmm. circuit mode, uh, there is no problem. SPD disconnect itself from the circuit. But if an SPD fails in a short circuit mode, there will be a short circuit current which flows through the SPD. Like, for example, if this is an SPD and there was no fuse, once this SPD fails, there will be a short circuit current which flows from the line through the SPD into the ground. Now, conduction of this short circuit current will be very high and energy dissipated will be very high. And SPD can catch fire and we have to ensure that SPD has to be disconnected from the circuit as uh, early as possible. I am repeating again. Once the SPD reaches end of its life, we have to ensure that SPD disconnect itself from the device, from the circuit. For that purpose, we are uh, using an additional fuse, which is called uh, of, uh, often called as backup protection. So, <clears throat> so generally, drill mounted SPDs are tested with GL bar GG fuses or HRC fuses. All the standards they recommend GL bar GG and HRC fuse only for SPDs. Uh, now, this backup fuse is only required when the line fuse is more than the specified value. This again we are going to discuss in the further slides. Now, in India, uh, we have we want our DBs to be fuseless. So normally what people do is instead of using fuse, uh, they'll use MCBs and a lot of manufacturers also sometimes they'll just give a recommendation of using M MCB or MPCBs, which is not at all safe. It can it is really a violation of safety and can cause in a uh, fire hazard because fuse and MCBs have uh, completely different tripping characteristics. They, they have a completely different uh, tripping curve. So it's not important that 63 amps fuse will trip in the same time as a 63 amps MCB. So we have to be very careful while choosing a backup protection. Okay. So uh, this is a video of what will happen when SPD fails in a short circuit board and a proper backup protection is not chosen. This is a small video uh, from uh, Karnataka, one of the petrol pumps in Karnataka. So this particular video was taken from one of the place in Karnataka. That particular SPD was experiencing TOV conditions and it failed. While failing, it created a short circuit and there was no backup uh, protection was installed in that SPD, uh, with that SPD. And hence it resulted in fire. You can see the images, what was the outcome of that blast, how the SPD has created a fire. So we have to be very, very careful by choosing a backup protection so that uh, our SPD, our circuit, everything is safe. You know, this was one of the uh, one application of backup fuse uh, to protect or disconnect our SPDs during the event of SPD failure. Another application of backup fuse is, uh, <clears throat> which is explained very well in IS 732, is protection to continuity of supply or protection to continue uh, priority to continuity of protection. Like in first case, we want priority to continuity of uh, supply. So let's say uh, at the end of the life, SPD1 has failed. Sorry, this uh, SPD has failed. Once this SPD fails, this fuse will blow. <clears throat> this fuse will isolate the SPD from the supply and uh, the supply will not be disconnected. Especially in case of like uh, process industry and all, they don't want uh, disconnection of the supply. So in case one, 
during the event of SPD failure, we have ensured the continuity of supply. Now, case two, where continuity of protection is important. Like we don't want our equipment to be unprotected at any point of time. Here, <clears throat> when this SPD fails, uh, this fuse will trip. Once this fuse will trip, the supply will be cut to the equipment. Your equipment will be protected, <clears throat> but it will not get any supply. To restore the supply, you have to change the fuse. And once you change the fuse, again your SPD will be in operation. So here we have ensured uh, priority to continuity of protection. Whereas in the previous case, we have ensured priority to continuity of supply. Now the third case is where priority to, conti uh, priority to continuity of supply and protection both are required. Uh, in that case, we have to use a connection somewhat like this. If one SPD fails, other keeps the protection. For example, if the left SPD fails, left fuse will bo uh, blow, but still right SPD and right fuse is there in the circuit. Your equipment is still in the protected. For that, we have a product that we are going to discuss. Like for that, this kind of product can be used. Uh, it's our uh, Protect T2 uh, ADV model, advanced model. It has two MOVs inside all the uh, plugs. So once the main MOV has failed, the backup MOV will be under operation. So these are tested with VD as well, US certification. These are pluggable device. Uh, there is a locking in between plugs and base. So it is vibration and shock uh, stand uh, capability it has. Uh, multiple voltage engines are available. Again, it has a uh, reliable disconnector. There is a thermal disconnector inside the SPD. Early warning system. That is a three-stage life indicator. That means normally when SPD... Uh, it, which has a flag indication when it is green in color it's working when it's red in color it's not working whereas in this case from green it will go to yellow and from yellow it is going to change to red <clears throat> so redundancy can be achieved for the critical loads and you will get continuity of protection as well as uh, continuity of supply this is how it is inside there are uh, two flag indications red and yellow there are two uh, protective equipment inside the <clears throat> spd and you can achieve the desired uh, protection. Now, general perception about uh, the backup fuse rating given by the manufacturers. So, generally, let's say a manufacturer has said that uh, up to 125 amps, uh, they don't need a SPD. There is a specified value every manufacturer will give for their SPD, that certain ampere rating. Once your F1, the main incomer, is more than that certain ampere rating, then only you need a backup protection. So let's say case one, line fuse is less than 125 amps. So technically no additional backup fuse is required. But in this case, okay, we'll come to that uh, later. In case two, line current is, uh, line fuse is more than 125 amps. And we have to put the additional backup fuse. The condition we have to ensure is F2, the additional backup fuse which we are going to install in the circuit should be lesser than 125 amps. But in case uh, one, during the end of the SPD life, uh, this uh, this fuse will disconnect. This fuse, F, uh, once there is a short circuit during the end of SPD's life, F1 will disconnect and you will not get the uh, continuity of the supply. <clears throat> so no continuity of supply during SPD failure in case one. In order to ensure continuity of supply, F2 is mandatory. So F2 can be in coordination with F1 that we are going to uh, uh, show in the next slide. But the main con uh, condition which we are which we have to ensure is F2 should always be smaller, smaller than F1. Your backup protection should always be smaller than the uh, main incomer or where we are going to connect the SPD. So by putting F2 which is smaller than uh, 125 amps, we can ensure the continuity of supply. Okay, in general, F1 by F2 ratio can be considered as 1.6 uh, by uh, 1, 1.6 is to 1. Okay, now we are going to discuss the various uh, uh, current rating uh, for SPDs, uh, backup fuse rating for the SPDs. Now, case 1, where priority to continue protection is required. F1 less than F2, uh, F1 uh, less than 125 amps. No F2 is required, but we have to uh, understand that when, when, when we are not giving F2, we are not going to get uh, continuity of the supply. If we need continuity of the supply, we need to put a F2. <clears throat> uh, 
if f1 is greater than 125 amps again we have to put an f2 which is smaller than 125 amps now in case 2 where priority to continuity of supply is given if f1 is 63 amps f2 can be 32 amps if f1 is 100 amps f2 can be 63 amps if f1 is equal to 125 amps f2 can be 63 or 80 amps if f1 is uh, greater than 250 amps f2 can be 125 amps now why these values and how these values have come i'll show a chart from the standard <clears throat> i am going to show a chart from the standard uh, in the further slides and that how, what is the uh, impulse current withstanding of 32 ampere fuse what is the impulse current withstanding of 63 ampere fuse that i am going to show in the further slides now <clears throat> That was for general type 2 SPDs. Uh, in case of recap uh, SPDs, we have a higher backup fuse rating of 315 amps. That means for F1 less than 315 amps, no backup fuse is required. F1 greater than 315 amps, but less than 500 amps, 200 amps backup fuse can be installed. For F1 greater than 500 amps, 315 backup fuse can be installed. 315 amps backup fuse can be installed. But in this case, uh, priority to continuity of protection is not possible for F1 <coughs> greater than the specified max value of the current. But how do we ensure the uh, continuity of the supply? <coughs> that is case 2. If F1 is 63 amps, again we have to put a F2 of 32 amps. F1 is 100 amps, we have to put F2 of 63 amps. F1 is 125 amps, F2 will be 63 or 80 amps. F1 two, 250 amps, F2 can be 125 amps. F1 315 amps, F2 can be 200 amps. F1 greater than 500 amps, F2 can be uh, 315 amps. Now, priority of, in this case, by using this kind of backup protection, uh, priority of uh, uh, priority to continuity can always be achieved. Uh, further to the fuse, we have tested our SPDs with 63 amps MCBs as, as well uh, also as a backup protection. Now this we have to be very careful while uh, choosing an MCB. If, if, if at all a manufacturer has tested its product with an MCB, then only we have we can install uh, MCB as a backup protection. That too the manufacturer has to exactly specify what rating MCB has to be installed as backup protection. So this is the chart from IEC 61643. Uh, part 12 2020 now you can see <coughs> normally what our priority was or what our priority till now is in while choosing the backup protection is that a backup fuse should always be uh, lesser than the main incomer panel uh, main comer of the panel or the f1 but what, what we had discussed earlier f2 should be less than f1 but how much less generally uh, the general conception is even for 315 amps or maybe 400 amps panel, even in the main incomer panel, people are choosing a lesser value fuse. The problem with choosing a lesser value fuse is if you see the right column of this chart, a 32 ampere fuse is going to withstand 10, 9.9 .9 kilo amperes of 8 by 20 uh, surge, whereas only 2.2 kilo ampere of 10 by 350 microsecond surge. That means once you're installing a 32 amp fuse, even though you are going to install a very good quality SPD with a very higher rating SPD, but fuse is not having that uh, current withstanding capacity. For example, even uh, 200 amp fuse, if we take from this chart, it has only 16 uh, kilo ampere of impulse withstand capacity. Whereas generally in class one, uh, in level one protection, the expected uh, impulse current can be 25 kilo ampere as well. So we have to ensure that we are using a higher rating or suitable rating of backup fuse, uh, which is again as per the expected uh, impulse current. So now <clears throat> there are so many confusions, ifs and buts about the backup fuse. How can we solve this thing? So one possible solution is to use SPD with integrated backup protection. So we have developed a product which has an inbuilt uh, uh, fuse inside an SPD. So you don't need to worry about what external backup fuse has to be installed in an SPD. So advantage of these SPDs are these are tested with the latest IEC standard that is IEC 61643 part 11 2011. It has a patented phase GTT technology. 
it has uh, it will uh, have a safe uh, safe behavior under lightning conditions like uh, that is during the event of lightning searches it will not uh, create any fire or create any problems in the circuit it has integrated backup fuse again fuses design allows optimum protection level once you don't have fuse you don't have a connecting wire there won't be any voltage drop across the fuse and the voltage production level will be uh, very low okay these all spds are leakage current free there is no leakage current uh, like earlier we had discussed uh, in case of spds there is a leakage current uh, mov based spds there is a leakage current because of to con tov conditions and all and this kind of leakage current uh, will reduce the life of an spd uh, as well as uh, it can create fire uh, during the spd failure so these all spds are leakage current free spds now shorter connector line uh, connection lines result is in lower protection levels because of no fuse the connecting wires will be very less and hence, and hence we will receive a lesser voltage protection level uh, since there is no fuse the space required will be very less the cost of fuse can be saved less wiring and less complexity this is one of the major advantage actually once we use this kind of integrated backup fuse spd this all this confusion and misconception about fuse so backup fuse will be gone again it's a reliable disconnection device impulse current up to 25 uh, kilo amperes 10 by 350 and one of the most important point is short circuit strength up to 100 kilo amperes see normally uh, if we talk about a big plant or a big a large building the expected fault current generally is around 50 to 65 kilo ampere now uh, the SPDs, the conventional SPDs which we were using currently were the short circuit rating of that SPD were around 25 kilo ampere to the maximum 50 kilo ampere was there in the market. The normal available SPDs, they had a maximum ISCCR of 50 kilo ampere. But let us imagine we have installed this 25 kilo ampere short circuit rated uh, SPD inside the main panel of a building which has an expected fault current of 65 kilo ampere. Now, during the event of SPD failure, this complete 65 kilo ampere fault current should uh, flow through the SPD. Now, if the SPD don't withstand, don't have the capability to withstand that much amount of short circuit rating, it can catch fire. The same thing is written in IS, uh, IEC 60364. It says that the short circuit rating of an SPD shall not be lower than the expected fault current at the connection point. I am again uh, telling the same thing. <clears throat> if we are going to connect an SPD at a main incomer pallet with a fault current rating of 65 kilo ampere, SPD should have minimum short circuit rating of 65 kilo ampere. But as of now, the SPDs which are there in the market have a short circuit rating of maximum uh, 50 kilo ampere. So we have developed this SPD with a short circuit rating of 100 kilo amperes. Again, these SPDs are pluggable. Let's say you have used you are using a four pole device, and uh, let's say R phase plug has been failed because of some reason. So you can just replace the R phase. You don't have to replace the complete SPD. Uh, vibration and shock uh, withstand capability. Uh, this we had already discussed. Now, in the similar way, uh, <clears throat> similar like type uh, one SPD, we have also developed type two SPD with integrated backup fuse. Again, they are also tested with. IEC 61643 part 11 2011 safe behavior under lightning condition or even during the switching surges while SPD operate it operates safely it has an integrated backup fuse uh, better overall protection because of the lesser wiring fuseler design uh, allows optimum protection level these are also leakage current free uh, it has a shorter connection line because of no fuses it also has a short circuit strength of 100 kilo amperes pluggability they are pluggable a nominal current of 20 kilo ampere per pole that is the industrial practice and a response time of 25 nanoseconds which is very less and which is the actual requirement of a standard now this uh, this particular graph we had discussed in the last webinar also this is a graph uh, showing the performance of DIN rail SPD as well as strikes of uh, series SPDs. You see, <clears throat> even with the increase in surge current, the voltage production level or let, let through voltage of strikes of is very less. The similar type of uh, operation can be seen in SPDs with integrated backup protection also. 
they also have a similar type of uh, performance characteristics the led through voltage or voltage drop across the spd will be very less and you will get a very good what uh, <coughs> effective voltage protection level so this was uh, the discussion about uh, backup protection now while selecting the spd there is one more parameters generally people uh, get confused with that what value should be uh, what value they ha- they should use for uh, impulse current that is lightning surge what uh, what should be the rating of a spd uh, with respect to lightning surge so <clears throat> uh, this we are going to discuss in this particular uh, webinar this also we are going to discuss when no specific calculation of current sharing is carried out a general assumption is made which is as per the standard that 50% of a lightning current is conducted to the building's earthing system and remaining 50% returns via the equipotential bonding spds so that means when once there is a lightning strike 50% will uh, lightning energy will be dissipated into the soil remaining 50% will again be diverted into the pow- uh, power line so let us say we, uh, if you are considering uh, <coughs> that place that building to be in uh, lpl1 the maximum prospective lightning current in lpl1 is 200 kilo amperes so once the 200 kilo amperes lightning uh, falls on a building as we discussed earlier and, and as per standard also 50% of that soil uh, that lightning energy that is 100 kilo ampere will go into the soil remaining 100 kilo ampere will be diverted to the power line in this case we have to ensure that <clears throat> this 100 kilo ampere while going into the equipment uh, we are using a spd of 4 plus 0 connection all three lines and neutral which is directly connected to the earth. so this 100 kilo ampere will be divided into four parts and each line will experience 25 kilo ampere impulse current so we have to ensure in case of lpl1 the minimum impulse current rating uh, should be 25 kilo amperes per pole in case of uh, 4 plus 0 connection and in case of 3 plus 1 connection the value should be line to neutral uh, 25 kilo amperes and neutral to earth 100 kilo amperes this again also we are going to discuss in the further slides so <clears throat> a type one spd which is connected and uh, at uh, the entrance of the building in lpl world uh, the expected uh, impulse current in the spd is 100 kilo ampere in lps lpl2 it is 75 kilo ampere in lpl3 and 4 it is 50 kilo ampere that is nothing but the 50% of the expected lightning current like if the expected lightning current in level lpl1 is uh, 200 kilo amperes so 50% of that will be dissipated into the ground remaining 50% will again come back into the ground <coughs> into our system uh, through spd which is nothing but 100 kilo amperes in level 2 uh, the expected uh, lightning impulse current will be 150 kilo ampere out of that 50% uh, that is 75 kilo ampere will be dissipated into the ground uh, ground remaining 75 kilo ampere will come into our building uh, through the power lines in level 3 and 4 again uh, expected uh, impulse current is around 100 kilo amperes out of that 50% will be dissipated into the ground and 50% will again come back into our power lines through spds so this is a chart normally we can have a, a general uh, assumptions <clears throat> so if no risk assessment is made for a general building like a normal building apartment or shop if there is no risk assessment made we can assume that total impulse current of 50 kilo ampere will be coming into the building same particular uh, thing is mentioned is is 732 as well as npc 2016 so <clears throat> we can consider the uh, total impulse current or total lightning current to be 100 kilo ampere and 50% of that 100 kilo ampere will be uh, 50 kilo ampere that will be the impulse current rating so in type 1 connection that is a 4 plus 0 connection line to neutral all three lines to neutral will be 12.5 ka per pole whereas neutral to earth will also be 12.5 ka per pole that is in case of uh, type 1 connection or 4 plus 0 connections where all three lines and neutral is directly connected to earth now uh, type 2 connections or 3 plus 1 connection where three lines are first connected to neutral and then neutral is connected through a single spd to earth in that case if the expected impulse current is 50 kilo ampere all line to neutral connection should withstand 12.5 ka impulse current and neutral to earth connection should withstand 50 ka impulse current that single pole uh, spd should withstand 50 ka impulse current similarly for uh, 
मल्टीपल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सप्लाई एग्जाम फॉर नॉर्मल अपार्टमेंट और कॉमर्शियल बिल्डिंग और रेसिडेंशियल बिल्डिंग फिफ्टी किलो एम पी एस ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेड इम्पल्स करेंट कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एंड अगेन इन टाइप वन फोर प्लस जीरो कनेक्शन लाइन टू अर्थ विल बी ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव के शुड बी ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव के एंड न्यूट्रल टू पी शुड ऑल्सो बी ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव के सिमिलरली इन थ्री प्लस वन कनेक्शन ऑल थ्री लाइन टू न्यूट्रल शुड है टेन बाई थ्री फिफ्टी और इम्पल्स करेंट विथ स्टैंड कैपेसिटी पर पोल एंड न्यूट्रल टू पी शुड बी फिफ्टी किलो एम पियर विथ स्टैंड कैपेसिटी पर पोल For large building with one LV supply and LPL level one, so as we discussed earlier, LPL level one, uh, 200 kilo ampere was the lightning current. Out of that, 50% goes into the ground, 50% comes back uh, to the power line. That is nothing but 100 kilo amperes. In that case, for four plus zero connection, uh, each line to earth and neutral to earth connection should withstand 25 kilo ampere of uh, lightning surge. and in case of uh, second type of connections 3 plus 1 connections line to neutral should withstand 25 kilo ampere whereas neutral to earth should withstand uh, 100 kilo amperes large buildings which comes in lpl level 2 which has a uh, expected uh, lightning current of 150 kilo ampere out of 150 again uh, 50% will be 75 kilo ampere so in that case line to <coughs> for first type of connections 4 plus 0 connection All three lines to earth and neutral to earth connection should have 18 kilo ampere of impulse current with same capacity. Whereas in type two, three plus one connection, uh, line to neutral uh, impulse current uh, capacity should be 18 kilo ampere, whereas uh, uh, neutral to earth should be 75 kilo amperes. Similarly, we have made uh, large buildings with one LV supply level three and level four, and building with in-house transformers. Again, since the building has in-house transformer. we can expect 50 currents of uh, 50 kilo amperes of impulse current uh, <coughs> considering the same level 1 and level 2 we have uh, uh, multiple models uh, one of the model is protect t1 hs which can be installed at uh, main incoming panel uh, panel of the building which is suitable for lpl1 and lpl2 it has a, a lightning impulse current total of 100 kilo amperes for line to neutral it can withstand uh, 25 kilo ampere 10 by 30 microsecond wave form per pole Uh, and for neutral to earth it is going to withstand uh, 100 kilo amperes per pole i mean there is only one pole for neutral to earth it is going to withstand 100 kilo amperes 10 by 30 wave form in uh, this particular spd there is no follow current applicable <coughs> there is no leakage current as well in this spd uh, this is our patented technology normally in case of spds uh, leakage current is one of the major uh, problems but we have used our uh, <coughs> combination of gdt and mov and hence there is no leakage current and follow, uh, no follow current maximum surge current 65 kilo ampere line to neutral and neutral to earth it will be 130 kilo amperes and that is 8 by 20 uh, microsecond wave form these spds are tested with tov 120 minutes 440 volt uh, with send again this parameter we are going to discuss in our upcoming webinars mcov of 300 volt so that if there is a there are small voltage fluctuations in the supply this spd is not going to be affected by that uh maximum backup fuse up to 350 amps that we had discussed in the earlier slides a uh, short circuit rating of 50 kilo amperes this particular uh, spd has a short circuit rating of 50 kilo ampere these are pluggables uh, it has uh, there is a locking in between uh, base and plug so if there is a vibration or there is sh- there are some shock this spd can withstand that this plug will not come out if there is a, a failure in let's say uh, y side plug you can just replace that plug complete spd need not to be replaced sensitive and reliable state of the art disconnector it has uh, inbuilt uh, thermal disconnector as well so in case uh, there is a, uh, this spd gets heated up due to some reason due to uh, leakage current or something or due to tov condition this spd will disconnect itself from the circuit and ensure the safety of the circuit uh, this is our spd for buildings which are coming under level 3 and level 4 these are this have a impulse current of 50 kilo amperes neutral to earth uh, lightning impulse current of 12.5 kilo ampere 10 by 350 line to neutral again there is no follow current in this spds these spds are also leakage current free there won't be any leakage current uh, the maximum uh, surge current of the spd is 65 kilo ampere line to neutral and uh, <clears throat> 130 kilo amperes oh, sorry 100 kilo amperes neutral to earth in case of 3 plus 1 connections Voltage production level of this spd is are very less. 
that is 1.5 kV, which is again as per the industrial standard also. These are also tested with the TOV conditions. For the same backup fuse rating is also 315 amps. It has a short circuit rating of 50 kilo amperes. These are pluggable. Uh, again, it has it also has a locking between uh, base and plug, so that during the transportation, during a, or any other case, if there is a vibration and shock, this SPD plug is not going to come out. <clears throat> so this was the general presentation about the <clears throat> backup fuse and impulse current uh, rating of a SPD. Furthermore, topics we are going to cover in our upcoming webinar also. So I'll just uh, end my presentation here and uh, you can have this question answer session and maybe Dominic sir can take over from here.